Welcome to this new episode of Shaping Openness. Today I want to talk about GitHub and take you on a journey to the homepage of the platform. Because that's the place where everything is decided. People stay or people leave. Because, in my experience, this homepage, this website, is so complex and full of concepts, terms and words that you need to know to feel at home that, it's that it is really important to explain them somewhere. And this is what I want to do in this video. So let's start. As you can see, I'm on the homepage of github.com, the place where the world builds software. Millions of developers and companies build, ship and maintain their software on GitHub. That's what they say. And if you look at the numbers, seems to be true. Although there are great alternatives that I love, where I like to work in the same way as I can do it on GitHub, GitHub is a place one should have been to, like a city you should have been to. Take, well, whatever place in the world you would take, say, Tokyo or New York or whatever. Um, GitHub is a place where sh you should have been and try to get into the whole subject matter to understand why this might be such a great place. This is what I want to do with you. And let's take the position of someone who is here for the first time because someone sent them there or said, uh, well, you should go there. Now they are there and uh, they ask the question, what can I find out about projects on GitHub? What is this place? And perhaps which community on GitHub do I want to belong to? If these are questions that you can uh, hook on, good. Um, second question that will lead me th through this little presentation is how can I join the conversation? How can I, if GitHub was a club, um, how can I order a drink? What do I have to say? How can I start a conversation with people, with people uh, standing around, chatting? How should I enter the dance floor to feel uh, good and to be welcome and perhaps make contacts and, uh, well, find some nice uh, company for the evening? For the first thing that I would uh, recommend to do, go on the Explore tab. So if you explore GitHub, there are, I think, three categories that are worth a visit. First is topics. If you go to topics, you will find a lot of names of software that you might have heard before. Um, if you scroll down, you will find perhaps something that sounds familiar or things that you have, haven't even heard of. Um, so. I, th I think it's a good thing to get to know what, what they are doing at GitHub, but perhaps it's better to start with collections. Depends on where you come from. The collections tab is a curated list, people from GitHub do this, which has other headlines. So as you can see here, it says open journalism, or let's say hacking Minecraft, or learn to code, or net neutrality, which is a cluster um, of projects and communities on GitHub that all deal with this topic here. So it's not such a techy topic. It's more or less um, a discourse people are involved in and, um, well, something that you can make a collection of. And the third thing is, I scroll back to the top, is the trending tab here. You can see here a list of today's most liked projects on GitHub. So this is based on the stars. A star is a like on GitHub. Based on these stars, this project is number one today. And my advice is if you want to uh, learn how the flow goes on GitHub. You can download mobile apps and follow the trending thread or the 
this trending stream like a normal social media stream. So every day you get the information what is trending and perhaps you get a little clue of uh, what's what people are what people are doing, what is trendy in software development these days, today, and learn more about where you should perhaps peek and see um, what are they doing there. So, well, this is everything that I'd like to show from uh, the Explore side, from the Explore page on the website. And... Um, Given the case that you have found something that interests you, you will click somewhere and you will reach a landing page of this repository and the community that belongs to that. And I picked an example that uh, helps me to explain everything that is important for me in this video. Um, I took the good old jQuery. jQuery is a JavaScript library that is quite old. Um, and uh, very stable and very widely used because it's very good. I still use it for some cases, although there are more advanced JavaScript frameworks, but if you just want to add some nice candy to a website, jQuery does. And let's go to a typical landing page of a repository. It's this one. And um, this one is my example here, and um, I want to have a look at some numbers, and I want to have a look at some concepts and terms here to um, open up this hermetic um, cluster of information that is very, very good for everybody who knows what's going on, but for newbies, people who are new to GitHub, it's not. So let's have a look at everything here. First of all, in the middle of this language, uh, landing page, <clears throat> there's always the file tree. That means it's folders and files that this repository consists of. That means if people build software in this repository, it's all the files with the code from which the software is built. And uh, I don't want to go into details here in G jQuery because it's just an example for how everything looks like. I just want to pick one file, which is the readme file, which is automatically shown below the file tree and should explain everything about the project here. So that means a good readme file is um, a signal of quality because someone took the time to explain uh, to everything outside of the community what this repository is about, what the community is doing, what the motivation is for the software developers here, what uh, the use cases are, so what you, what you can use the software for, and how, can, how you can start developing and contributing. So this is the readme file, and uh, it's more a techie speaking thing. You see all these uh, code um, uh, lines here in the middle, but that's normal because it's it's a coding platform. But uh, I'm al always interested in the first paragraph, first two paragraphs, like in Wikipedia, um, because I want to get just a clue of what what they are doing here. So this is the readme file in the file tree. Next thing is, let's have a look at some numbers here. First thing, the stars, we've seen them before because they are the foundation of the trending list. Based on these stars per day, the trending is calculated and it shows uh, how many people love or like this project. So you can express, express your love or your dedication to this project, giving it a star. Um, sometimes on the web you will find um, uh, um, a button star on GitHub or like me on GitHub. This is the stars. The more important concept, which is really interesting because it is the foundation of the whole development speed and community building that is so great with GitHub, is the fork label here. As you can see, there are 20,359 forks. Uh, let me explain what a fork is, because as I said, this is uh, the magic here. Let's say you want to contribute some code to jQuery because you found a bug or you feel able to contribute a feature to the whole thing. Then you wouldn't be able to directly contribute to, these, to this 
original repository of jQuery because nobody knows you. Why should anybody allow you to contribute directly into the code base? So you would have to be trusted to directly contribute. But this is in a global collaboration situation. This is not possible. So the concept is different here. You make a copy of this original repository, and this is called a fork. So tw over 20,000 people have made a fork, and this gives you the opportunity to do whatever you like with this copy because it belongs to you. You don't have to ask anybody for permission. It's your copy. You can do whatever you like and you can leave it like that. So if it's just an improvement for yourself of jQuery and it works for you, that's great. But let's say your improvement um, is, is a very good improvement. It's, it's, a, it's a fixed bug. It's an added feature. And you think, well... I want to give something back to those who gave me this solution, this repository, this project. And now comes the second half of the whole thing. First half is the fork. Second half is the pull request. From your copy, you make a pull request to the original repository asking the maintainers of the original software in this case jQuery, to have a look at your contribution and merge your contribution into the original software if it's good enough and really adds value to it. And this means that this pull request is a subject of quality and not of trust because you have to show what you did. People don't need to believe that you're a good contributor you have to show what you have and then in an open pull request they are always open people who have a look at decide if this is worth merging or not might be that they say well thank you very much that's great we'll take it or they say thank you for the effort but please come back tomorrow and fix a b and c because this is not the way we do it and hopefully they say it in a friendly way so that you don't feel pushed away. You feel honored that someone had looked at that. You go home, you fix what they said, you bring it back. And perhaps again and again and again you have to fix stuff. But finally, in this iterational process, your contribution might be merged. And this quality instead of trust concept with the fork is what speeds up this let's say anonymous collaboration situation because people contribute that have never seen themselves before in real life that perhaps don't know each other because they never had a conversation before the conversation starts with a pull request and perhaps afterwards there comes a um a, uh, a discussion or some kind of community integration. So this is the core concept here. And of course, this, this depends on that you know how to code and how to contribute with quality and is perhaps not the starting point that you were looking for because um, you want to contribute but you cannot code. And perhaps this is not your, um, your core skill. Your core skill is asking good questions, uh, giving advice on uh, from your stemming that stems from your experience. And there's another place that you might want to go to, and this is the issues tab. I click here on issues, and issues can be anything. It can be a bug that was found and needs to be reported. It can be a feature request, and it can be a, an idea of um, why sh what should be discussed. So this is the place where... Um, where the, the central the central discussion on box features improvements and this stuff happens. So my advice is if you find something interesting, you can go to the issues and scroll through them and click on this and that and another one to find out how people talk and what they talk about and what the climate of the discussion is. Is it a friendly discussion? Are there people that really appreciate 
your participation? Or is it something that is that feels rough and uh, perhaps um, uh, closed? So uh, it gives you a good impression of who you have to do with if you want to participate or contribute here. So this is the issues tab. And um, next thing we'll have a look at is, um, let's say, well, we're, issues give you an impression of how the climate or the, 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 the way of uh, um, how people talk to each other is. And there are other signals that you can uh, look for on this landing page that give you an impression about the, the state of the community that works on this software project. And this is very important Besides the quality of the, the software, I think it's important to look for some other things here. Next thing is that I always look for when I go to a new project on GitHub is when was the latest commit? That means when was the latest um, point in time where somebody added something to the code base? And this was here 11 days ago. If I, if I clicked here, I could see what it was, this is not interesting here because this is just on the surface, but of course you can click here and see what was committed, what was the contribution. And it was 11 days ago, which is good because this is an old project and I'm happy to see that people still work on it um, 11 days ago. A good sign for a healthy project that is not dead. But there are more uh, indicators of the health of this project, which you can find on Insights. If you go to Insights, there is a good place to start with is who are the people? Who, who is working on this? And it's the contributors page. So if you scroll down, you will see, well, this is the inventor of jQuery. Of course, he started once and then he quit. I don't know why, but doesn't matter because another guy started or took over here and other people joined him, as you can see here. This guy does frequently things since 2013 or something. And there are other people adding to this code base, but, well, not so many, not so often. So, and I want to know how many people added to this project in the last two years. So I zoom into this here, comes out, it was this guy and this guy, and sometimes the other guys. So this short analysis shows that jQuery depends on some people who quite frequently add something to it, but obviously there is no active development going on here. So no new features and so on. So I, I would say this needs more inspection, deeper inspection, but this is the way of how you can start your analysis of community health here. Um, well, I go back to the homepage and uh, we have had a look at the stars, the forks, pull requests, which are related to the forks, to issues, which is the main conversation thread here, and to the frequency of commits and the number of contributors and uh, how often they contribute here. Let's have a look finally at the right column here because there are some hidden informations that might be interesting for you if you want to decide on using the software or even contributing something to the software. There should be a link here that leads to a homepage. I do this here. I go come to this homepage here of jQuery where everything is explained for, I would say, normal users and not especially for those who are interested in developing or improving the software. And um, this doesn't need to have a home page because you might you could say this is the home page here. But um, be happy if there's some because normally there's more to read about everything that is this software is for. Then you can have a look at the license because um, the license of the software might give you uh, an impression of what happens to your contribution if you contribute? Who is the author? Um, under, under what conditions do you contribute? And um, 
the MIT license this means, um, it's a very permissive license. It says that you can do nearly everything with the software and uh, even commercial use, you can modify it, you can distribute it, you can use it privately, so it's very permissive. You can do everything with it. But don't expect anybody be, to be reliable, uh, liable for, for this uh, for this software. So there are various kinds of, of um, software licenses, and it's a good start to have a look at the license here because if you want to use the project for yourself, you need to know under what circumstances, and if you want to contribute, you want to know about um, who will who will profit from your contribution, under what circumstances. The code of conduct for me is also an indicator of a healthy community because people sat down and wrote some kind of law or guideline how they want to work together. So for everybody entering this community here or a community, a code of conduct could be a good sign of well, there is awareness of it's important how we work together and it's, uh, it states clearly under what circumstances you are welcome and not. Good thing. Um, next thing here in the column that I want to talk about is the releases category. Um, a release is a certain point in time where a working version of this repository is frozen and published, which means that um, this comes normally with a change log, which is a file that clearly states what changed from the la latest version to this version, and uh, thus makes clear if uh, what bugs were fixed, what features were added, and for example, if the new version breaks the old version. So uh, for people who are depend on using the software, um, a new release is always important to um, analyze for changes. And uh, also a community that makes releases shows that they are professionally developing the software because otherwise this code base here would work or would not work and you would never know what state you're dealing with because it's an constantly in the flow and uh, a release is a certain snapshot of the repository in time which makes it easy for you to uh, upgrade your software to decide on when to upgrade so this is important next thing that is i think it's uh, an amazing feature of github is an automatic analysis of who uses the software because uh, when you build on free software, um, comes out that there is a dependency graph. That means that you build your software with other software projects, so you depend on them. And looking from back to front, from a dependency, you can see who uses your software. And this is what this category here does. Um, they found out that 500,000 31 and 590 other projects depend on jQuery. So it must be um, a great thing, I think. And uh, of course, this is an indicator of quality. Not really, you would say, because if it's an old software and it still doesn't work and lots of people depend on it, perhaps it's no longer a good thing, but, well, you get the idea. Well, contributors... Don't just look at the numbers of contributors. If it says 277 contributors, it sounds a lot, but as we have seen in the Insights tab, it's not true that um, these 277 people contribute all the time. They once have contributed and get credits on this page for their contribution, but they are not the indicator for active development, as, as we've seen before. Final thing is, um, a little statistic on the languages used in a repository and gives you the, ch the chance to decide if you can join the conversation because you know these languages or not. So again, back to the image of, um, of the club, you might find yourself in a club where you don't understand what people are talking about because you don't know the language and you don't know the topics they're talking about. So um, have a look at the languages here and decide then for yourself if you can if you can join here. 
Well, this is all for now. And um, I think uh, if you want to participate in a GitHub repository, it is a good thing to start with reading the issues. Well, first of all, explore the website. Then, if you find something interesting, have a look at the issues. There's a new feature here, which is discussions. It's a more uh, general discussion on the project, on the community. Have a look at, if there's a discussion, have a look at this one too. And uh, then be a little bit brave because you need to step up to this community and say something. Otherwise, they won't recognize that you're there. They won't take notice of you. So you have to say something. And say something is write an issue, comment on an issue. And if you really want to contribute, this is no problem because you make a copy of the repository and work on your copy and nobody will take notice of that. So you're alone in your room, tinker with the software. And then if you want to um, join the conversation and participate in the community, you make a pull request and show what you have. And as I said before, then perhaps it goes on with diving into the whole thing. So it is something that, uh, is, that needs a little bit of luck so that you meet nice people that are friendly and welcoming, but it also needs some kind of uh, brave steps on the dance floor um, and dance. <laughs> so um, this is all for now. So glad that you stayed till this point. Hopefully you found something interesting in this video. If you have, have some comments or want to add something to what I said or how I interpret the platform, I'd be interesting to read this in the comments below. And uh, hopefully I see you next time in the next episode.